91.3 WVST. This is Soul Logistic Radio Show. I got from the legendary hip hop group, the Fat Boys, Cool Rock Ski on the line. What's popping, fam? What's going on, brother? How you feeling? I'm feeling great. Uh, we're talking about 50 years of hip hop. When you hear the words 50 years of hip hop, what's the first thing that come to mind? Um, just the um the struggles to get to to this point. Um, uh, the early struggles, but you know, you know, after a while, it just became so um easy for people to enter um uh, the culture and you know and fulfill their dreams. But in the beginning, it was so it was really tough trying to um, put everything together. Mm, um, you, but it was fun at the same time, a lot of fun at the same time. Yeah, you you guys started uh, when I say you guys the Fat Boys Disco Three, R.I.P. to Buffy and Prince Monkey D. You you guys started so young, and hip hop still was kind of young. Uh, how did how your family and everybody react to the, y'all early success? Um, everybody was cool with it. Because it, it gave um, us the opportunity to get out to get out of the situations that we was in um, growing up in Brooklyn, New York, at a time where the crack epidemic um, came. The crack was was everywhere. Mm. So the neighborhoods was getting, the neighborhoods was already tough, but it just got a little little worse. So it just gave us the opportunity to um, to get our families in a better position, you know. So that was the the biggest blessing of them all, you know, to help and to help other people out as well. Yeah, that's crazy. And um, you guys was overseas a lot, uh, being young. How was that being overseas a lot? Being you know, like being young, you get to absorb how it is uh, out of the country. You know, we're still oblivious to a lot of stuff because we're just walking around different places, like in Germany, Italy, and, and Paris. So we we didn't really soak it all in because we were just you know we just looked at it. Like, you know, it, it was what it was. We didn't yeah. start to appreciate it until we started going back over there later on in our, you know, in our, our, our 20s. Then we started to appreciate it more. But when you're young, you really don't. It, it just, it's not really an eye opener because you're just going over there just to do business as far as promotional work and all that stuff like that. And you want to get back home as quick as possible. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. not, you know, you're well, not, you was you're getting, from there. You, you, you was getting homesick. I mean, we had homesick. We were, like, when we first started going overseas, we would get homesick. Right. Um, but I guess once we was going ever so often, after a while, we just started saying, you know what? You know, it's getting better and better every time we come over here. So we just started enjoying ourselves. But at first, it was like, you know, really just calling home a lot and <laughs> asking how everybody's doing <laughs> yeah. to get back to New York, you know. Uh, I think, I believe the Fat Boys was the first hip-hop rap movie stars well what do you think about that i believe that because y'all you stole y'all stole the film and crush group you stole that this audience was real dope well how do you feel about that i mean we were actually we were the first rap group to have um to, to be featured in our own movie to star in our own movie um which i mean you, you gotta look at it like this nobody took the the art form seriously outside of people who was already in it mm. I'm talking about the artist. Right. So anybody outside of that wasn't really, they just thought it was a passing fad. Um, so by the time we did Crush Groove, that's when people's eyes started opening and saying, hey, we got to take this art form series. I'm talking about people within the industry. Right. And the record sales were competing with some of the biggest stars who were out at that time. So we was charting, Run DMC was charting, um, Houdini was charting. We wasn't like we was in like the bottom um, 50. You know, the bottom 100. We was like on the high 30s and the high 20s. You know? mm, so right, like, right. Like you gotta, yeah, you gotta take it seriously. So by the time we got to do our first movie, that's when people, you know, a lot of people were like, "Wow, you know, you had artists who was out there for years, uh, before, way, way before us." I'm talking like in the rock and roll era and, and different artists, and they never started in their own movie. Mm. So it was the eye openers for a lot of people to see rappers. In their own, in a major motion picture, it wasn't like this was straight to video. This was like a major motion picture. Right, right. So it, it was, it was, uh, yeah, it was big for us to have that movie come out, and and like our manager said at the time, this is going to be your legacy. Mm. Like no matter, if people never heard of your music. People don't know who the Fat Boys or Disco Three were. They can always look at that movie and just look you guys' names up and say, "Oh, this is who they were." You wow. Know? So a movie goes a long way. Wow. 
That's dope. And speaking of Run DMC and Houdini, uh, you have a petition about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I believe everybody that was on the Fresh Fest should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm talk about that. Yeah, I mean, listen, everybody's icons in their own field of music. So you would have the Rolling Stones and, and um, you know, Prince, Michael Jackson, whoever is an icon in their particular music, who's ever a legend in their particular music, deserves every accolade they get. Why should hip-hop be any different? It's music. At the end of the day, it's, still, it's called rap music for a reason, because it's music. So when you get um, icons like Houdini, who I think is some of the, made some of the, the best songs ever in the hip-hop period. Right. Um, and I, I could put their catalog along with any rapper um, from back in the day to now. And, you know, and they, they'll you know, withstand the test of time with their music. And with us, I like so, breaking down so many doors um, in the in the hip-hop community as far as being, you know, starring our own movies. And, right. Um, being the, the sec, only the second rap group to go have a gold rec, a gold album. I'm Run DMC is the first, we were second, run, and Houdini was the first rap group to go platinum. Mm. We were the third rap group to go platinum. So, so there's so many instances that you can put um, on the Fat Boys legacy to say, hey, yeah, they can be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. At the same time, we're not begging to be in there, but I wish we just put, put together a hip-hop Hall of Fame once and for all. And just have it legitimate, you know, have a legit hip hop hall of fame. And you put in um, from each region around the country, you put in one rap group or one artist at a time, like maybe five at a time. Right. You don't have to put in 10 or 20 you know, <laughs> it's going to start looking raggedy. Right, right, but, right, um, right. You do it like the rock the rock. Yeah, it's going to look like some kind of, um, you know, off, off brand award show. You know, um, you can put in five at a time. Uh, whether it be solo, I mean, two solo and three rap groups or vice versa. So I'm, I'm hoping we can get to that level one day and have something real legit because this music to this day is the highest um, selling music and the most popular music. And the second only, it's, it's first and second. Country music and hip hop music has been going at it for decades, just back and forth. So, um, and it's still here. From 1979 to 2023, it's still around and it's still as popular as it was from day one. So uh, why not have a hip hop Hall of Fame? Right, right. Now, I'm, I agree with you. And speaking about Hall of Fame, well, you, congratulations! You was inducted into the Long Island uh, Music and Entertainment Hall of Fame. How did that feel? That was dope because it's something for the for the fellas, you know, for Prince Monkey D and Buff Love, who are no longer here. Um, so anything I'm doing while I'm still here on this earth is going to be gearing towards just um, making them happy and making sure nobody forget about them. Because, um, you know, I mean, I hate to, when people say, well, you're the last one left. It's like, well, it's, it's not just being the last one left. It's just the last one to tell the story. Wow. You know, okay. so you got to, yeah, you got to have somebody to tell the story. And um, I have to take on that responsibility because I'm not really into accolades myself, you know. But if it's these two, these two members are no longer here, I can speak for them. Right. Because if they were here, I wouldn't be doing half the stuff I'm doing. I'd be like, "Yo, you got the internet, y'all do it. I'm not doing this crap." Ah, you know, hey, 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 so, 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 <laughs> hey, so, you saying uh, how you play in Crush Groove when you don't? No, I ain't with it, Jack. I ain't doing it. That's you for real. Oh yeah. I'm ah. You know, if they were to like your rock, man, put something out about us. No, okay, computer, right? We'll do it, you know? <laughs> oh, snap. But being that name all over here, I'm, I got to speak for them. Right. And I make so many jokes about them because they know that's how I was. Like, we would joke 24 hours a day while we were around one another. So that's just the way we were, you know? Right. Uh, did you get a chance to check out Billboard Top 50 Hip Hop Groups of All Time? Did you see that list? I never saw the list. Somebody, somebody sent me the list, and, and I think it came out like number forty-seven or something like that. I, something weird. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it is what it is. We're living in a time now where um, you got a whole lot of um, Johnny Come Lately. <laughs> they're making their own. Yeah, they're making their own list. Right. So nobody really does background on 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 groups and and, and solo artists when it comes down to hip hop. So you probably got a lot of thirty-year-olds, 
25 to 35 year olds who don't know half these, half these, these rappers. Right. So they're just doing it probably just to keep the the classic hip hop artists happy. You know mm. what I mean? Um, in my opinion, in my sole opinion, and you know, people can argue about this, but I think Melly Mel should be the number one on everybody's list because Melly Mel is the is the the, the prototype MC. I mean, he did. He covered everything from A to Z. Right. Party, and, party you know, rap, and, party rap, conscious rap. Yeah. Right. So if it wasn't for Melly Mel and the the, the, the cadence and, and and the skills that he brought to the the, the rapping to the MC set, um, who else would you would you put up there? I mean, you have Kumo D, you have Grandmaster Cash, you have Curtis Blow. But I think for my money, Mo, I mean, Melly Mel is the the prototype that you, if you want to make an MC, you make it out of Melly Mel first. And everybody else just comes off the branch of a Melly Mel. But that's just my sole opinion. Right. So if I'm going to make a list of myself, I would put Melly Mel first, and anybody just come after that. you know. And that'd be no disrespect to any, if, 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 I, if I'm breaking it down to an artist, and if they're really into their craft, if, they, if they're really into the culture of hip-hop and rapping and MCing and being a lyricist, they would know what I'm talking about. You know, um, but I think with hip hop is, is I think with rap, everybody is so competitive that if you put that list out there, you're going to have a million people within seconds say, no, this is my list. Right, no, right, list. right, you right. Know, like, so it's all, it's all, it's all, it's, it's all subjective anyway, right? It's all subjective. Everybody, you know, got their opinion or whatever, what moves them, right? Right, exactly. So I can't argue with the next man if I, if I see his list. I'm like, okay, well, that's, you know, that's your list. That's who you like. So be it. Um, but this is who I like. So, right. you know, right. um, it is what it is. So uh, talk to us about the Retro Boxing Show. Retro Boxing Show just comes from me, from my love of, um, of the sport of boxing, the sport of mixed martial arts, um, but preferably boxing. I grew up at a time where um, I could see this. I could see boxing on TV, on regular TV, on Fridays and Saturdays. There was no pay per view, hmm. and if you did have pay per view, um, you know it was some. It was like a really, really big fight, like a Larry Holmes versus the Ali, right, um, right. But you know, or or, or Ali versus um, Foreman, and it would come on the next week after that. But you can see a Muhammad Ali fight, a Sugar Ray Leonard fight on any given Friday on NBC, Channel 7. So my love of the sport came from just sitting with my brothers and my father, and we're sitting there on the Friday night and just watching um, Muhammad Ali versus Ernie Shavers, you know, Sugar Ray Leonard versus somebody, and, and, and you know, Roberto Duran versus somebody. So I would just sit there and watch the sport, and I fell in love with it to the point where I wanted to be a boxer at one point. Mm. But... Mm. um. Yeah, I, I get my nose busted real bad. My mother, she never... My mother liked... Yeah, she, uh, so I, I pretty much retired at the age of 13. But um, my mother, she loved the sport, but she never she never understood how a man has to fight for his money. Mm. That's how she looked at it. Right, right. She didn't look at it as, as, a, as, a, as a, a science to it. She looked at it like, you know, you're getting your head beat in just to get some money. You know, that's how she looked at it. But... I just fell in love with the sport, and to this day, I still go on YouTube and just watch the old fight. I like the new fighters as well, but I just like to go back to the, the old fights because these guys, they fought with so much passion. Right. And none of these guys came in fights out of shape. Marvin Hagler was always in tip-top shape when he fought. You know, you look at fighters like Ken Norton, who was built like a rock. You know, right, like, right. Uh, George Foreman. Not an ounce of fat on these guys. These guys always, and these guys fighting 15 rounds back then. And they would go the full 15 sometimes. Right. So, uh, yeah, it was a different, they were different kind of animals back then. They were different. And so to this day, like I said, I grew up on that. I grew up watching so so guys, who's so. who's your number one? Who's your number one? Ali, Frazier? Who's your, who's your number one? Mike Tyson? Oh, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad, yeah, Muhammad Ali all day. Ali uh, all day. Mike Tyson came from... I grew up in the Mike Tyson era because we're pretty much like the same age. Right. I grew up in the Mike Tyson era as far as um, us knowing who Mike Tyson was when we were like 17, 18 years old. But for, for my money, Ali just did so many things in the sport and out the sport. Right, right, um, right, right. So, yeah, he just spoke up at a time. Like Muhammad Ali was speaking up 
where a lot of black people was like, man, you shouldn't be saying stuff like right, that. Right, right. Yeah, you know, but Al Lee was like, man, I don't care. Like, I got a platform, and I'm going to speak for my people. And you got to give that man all the credit in the world for, for what he endured. They, they tried to put him, they tried to lock him up. It took three years out of his career um, when he was at the pinnacle uh, of, of his success as far as a boxer. So they tried to take that away from him. But he came out of jail. Um, he came back at the boxing, rather. And he came back with a vengeance. And, you know, he, he got back the title from, from Foreman. Um, he lost to Joe Frazier. I think he took Joe Frazier lightly in that first fight. Um, but by the time he got to Foreman, and Foreman was a monster. Foreman a, mon a monster. A monster, right. Yeah. Yeah, and, and he was the, the epitome uh, of a bully the epitome of a monster. And he, he beat the two top fighters, which was Frazier. He destroyed Frazier in two rounds. He destroyed Ken Norton in two rounds. So this man was just going, he was like, give me more, like, feed me more. So by the time he got to Ali, Ali took those shots. He took those punches, and he came back and then wore that band down. And, you know, he it was the, it was the oldest trick in the book. Yeah. He wear himself out. You know? yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Hey. So Ali is, you know, out. Ali is, is the is the greatest fighter of all time. I would say Sugar Ray Robinson and Ali is on the same wavelength as far as fighters. But when it comes down to political issues and fighting for his people, Muhammad Ali is still number one in that category. Word. Hey, uh, Kurowski, I want to thank you, man. We appreciate what all you've done for the culture, man. Uh, any last words you want to uh, talk to the cool kids and Solar Jesse Rail show? Any last words you got? What you got going on? Um, yeah, just, just got, um, the, like I said, the virtual boxing show every Friday night at 9 p.m. on IG, my IG live at Legendary Kurovsky on, on, um, Instagram. Um, working with Certified Nation Entertainment and working with their artist, City the Great is coming out. City the Great is out. The new artist, City the Great, he's back by Special Ed. Okay. He has a brand new single out called New York Sounds Like This. And Honey Stack, um, is a female MC out of Baltimore. Okay. And she's about to blow up as well. So I'm just working, you know, trying to get these guys and trying to get their heads on straight and, and let them know what to expect in this in this music industry they're about to face, you know, once they gain success. So I'm just doing that and just, you know, just um just here living, man. Just just here living. And I wanna say what's up to all the hip hop heads out there who love that real authentic hip hop music and um, you know, peace and blessings to everybody. Yeah, okay, you got to send me that music. I appreciate you, man, and uh, peace and blessings, bro. All right, brother. Peace.